Hey, what's up? It's Jim, and today I'm going to talk about Mystery Science Theater 3801, Revenge of the Creature. I've been a Mystery Science Theater 3000 fan for a very long time, actually, sort of right before this episode aired, and I used to videotape them off of TV. I had tons and tons of tapes of them, and I've always had a love of this show, and I've always wanted to do reviews of individual episodes, and I thought with a new season coming out on Netflix, this would be the perfect time to do that. But I also thought why not look back at the last time Mystery Science Theater actually had a really big reboot and was on a new network and that was with the sci-fi channel and this was the first episode of that kind of looking back and kind of reminding me how to keep an open mind when coming into a new kind of reboot of Mystery Science Theater obviously you could say from KTMA to Comedy Central or whatever version I think it was Comedy Channel or Channel Ha or whatever it was when Mystery Science Theater 3000 started from KTMA to that to season one but obviously I think uh, season 8 is more representative of something that more fans went through than that. I remember when this aired, this was uh, February 1st, 1997, which is now uh, 20 years ago, which makes me feel old. It was a big kind of nerd weekend. The Star Wars Special Edition came out in theaters, so I got to see Star Wars on the big screen for the first time ever, and I got to see Mystery Science Theater 3000 restart again. And it was only really half a season of TV without Mystery Science Theater having it ended around the spring with Laser Blast and then coming back in February of 97. Apparently was the longest time between new Mystery Science Theater 3000 episodes at the time, which now is kind of a joke, but at the time it was. And it was a big re-establishing of the series because a lot of people didn't really see a lot of season seven. Laser Blast, that episode was more promoted because it was the supposedly final episode at the time because Sci-Fi Channel gotten a lot more homes because of Mystery Science Theater 3000 fans, which they kind of just used and then, you know, fucking dump the show but whatever three seasons later but they're putting more promotion behind promoting a new season of mystery science theater 3000 so for a lot of people it was actually longer than the top span of time between laser blast and this in terms of air dates because they had missed out on season seven apparently a lot of those hadn't aired a lot which i don't remember as much but that's what i keep reading in from news groups at the time and such. It was also a changing of the guard. You had the sci-fi channel days of more continuity-based host segments. The beginning of Bill Corbett as Crow as Trace Bill, you did not make the transition from Comedy Central to Sci-Fi Channel. I kind of remember that time as, I know Bill Corbett kind of says his puppeteering isn't very good at the beginning and you should just imagine that Crow had a stroke or something. And I actually remember on news groups and Mystery Science Theater fans, I've always loved the Mystery Science Theater fan base, calling themselves Misties. Everyone was like, let's just give him a break. You know, it's his first one. And clearly he's not going to be doing what Trace Blue did towards the end of season seven, who's much more of a trained puppeteer at that point than Bill Corbett was. And I think when I'm watching this, I give it kind of more of a chance. But I also think the people making this episode understood they couldn't go full in on this weird continuity thing that the show had changed a little bit. They try to get to more of the core of the show, which is them riffing on movies. It's not the host segments. It's not anything else. They want to do a decent Mystery Science Theater 3000 episode. And that's what Revenge of the Creature does. In fact, it doesn't even have host segments go on too long. The movie starts about minute seven of the episode, although I think I cut out commercials in my old tapes, so maybe it was longer with a commercial break or something. I forget if there was or not. But point is, if you're watching this on DVD and how most people watch these episodes now, it's about seven minutes, which, although this is post them doing invention exchanges, is uh, pretty quick. They set up that they've stopped being beams of light. They set up that Crow started earlier and sounds different. They set up that there's a Professor Bobo and all this stuff, but they don't really get into what they talk about about in the opening theme song with like this chase and Pearl Forrester or any of that. Pearl doesn't even show up till the end of the episode. They kind of set everything up. Hey, the guys are goofy. This Professor Bobo thing's kind of weird, but let's move on to the movie, which is Revenge of the Creature. So they just present to you like what you want for Mystery Science Theater 3000. And I was very satisfied at the time rewatching it. I don't think this is an amazing episode, but I think it brings you back to Mystery Science Theater. It gives you a decent enough episode. I would never put this on the, my one of my more favorites. I mainly remember it as being of this this amazing weekend in 1997 and mystery science theater returning it has some good gags i don't think it has amazing riffs in it but bill corbett and his chemistry 
with Kevin Murphy and Mike Nelson is automatic. It's like, it's kind of amazing. I know he knew them before, but to have that kind of chemistry working automatically shows why he's continued to work with those guys even to this day with Rift Tracks. I don't think it's as well gelled as it is today or anything, or as it would be as the season progressed, but it definitely is there. And it kind of shows you, you know, this is what you love about Mystery Science Theater is these guys riffing on a B movie, I guess. The Sci-Fi Channel involvement in these seasons has always been a bit of a problem, and I don't think it started out in the best way. The first five episodes are all universal horror movies, all within the same era, this being 55, the last one being 56. And then you don't even get into a color film until episode 10. And the thing is, like, I like black and white movies, and Mystery Science Theater is probably more known for black and white films than they are for color movies, but I kind of don't like the lack of variety, particularly, like, they literally have five universals and then a couple American international pictures and then they get to the color ones. So it's like you really did feel like you're watching the same kind of movies over and over again and they weren't presenting as much variety. Now I understand it's the sci-fi channel and they wanted them to do more sci-fi movies which was expected but having a bunch of robots in a spaceship riffing on a bad movie wasn't that sci-fi enough? Like... <laughs> Did you really need more sci-fi from the show? Like, it seemed a little ridiculous. And the continuity, I don't love. I think most people prefer the riffing to the host segments, and that's, like, kind of a larger conversation, I guess. But I think in this episode, it seems to work generally. None of them are amazing or anything. Mike's host segments were never ones I liked as much as Joel's generally. But this era, I, I don't love the continuing saga of it, really. It can get interesting as things progress. I feel like this episode is way more about the riffing of the movie, and even that isn't the particularly best of, but it still has funny things like the let's test our flashlight stuff. <laughs> There was one joke where they have the spotlight on Gilman, and they're like, Hey, I'm just taking a walk. This is just racist. That was really funny. And Revenge of the Creature is an interesting film to do, particularly because I think it's notable for being the sequel to Creature from the Black Lagoon, actually directed by the same director, Jack Arnold, who had some kind of interesting B-horror movies. This is not one of them. This was the first sequel, and it's the only 3D sequel to a 3D movie from the golden age of 3D, apparently, and the only 3D movie released in 1955. And and also has the first screen appearance of Clint Eastwood, which Mike and the bots have fun with. It's kind of like a little too notable, and it kind of shows like where sci-fi, I think at first, maybe didn't exactly know what to do with Mystery Science Theater. I think it worked better when they had the Hobgoblins and Soul Taker. That's, I think, when the show really shined. It seemed to get off to an awkward start, but it's like they're kind of learning what they're doing with this new thing. They have a new cast member. Things are changing. And I remember generally fans were like, well, you know, it's not going to be peak Mystery Science Theater but like let's let them develop it i don't know if 20 years later we have that same open-mindedness i'm curious with jonah and the bots now will people have as much of an open mind with the new one as the fan base did with this one which i felt like everyone was like ready to accept it but i do remember as the season went on having episodes be so similar in terms of the film content i don't think uh was something i generally loved as much and i've never been as big a fan of the sci-fi channel episodes as much although there's certain ones that are among my favorites like prince of space and things of that nature and i think it did bring the show back is particularly season eight got a lot of promotion i don't think nine and ten as much although 10 because joel came back and i remember the beginning and of course the very end i do think this is kind of a weirder pick i'm not going to defend revenge of the creature i like creature from the black lagoon as most people i think do this is not and gilman actually as famous as that character is he doesn't actually have a lot of movies and this being the second one i can't imagine what the third gilman movie is i think it deserved being made fun of and riffed through but i think mystery science theater even b movies that are a little more notable they make a lot funnier and it's not something that bothers me but i think it's something that this one it was a little bit of an odd fit, but they get it to work. They brought back the show in a way that made you excited. It's like Force Awakens. You watch Force Awakens and afterwards you're like, hey, I want to watch more Star Wars movies. And after this, most people I know who watched it were like, I want to watch more Mystery Science Theater. So it did its job. It's not Manos. It's not Laser Blast. It's not however many other episodes that they've made of it, but it's a good attempt at doing what it really needed to accomplish for the series as a whole, which was bring it back and bring the audience back and even people who had kind of left the show or hadn't been able to keep up with it because of the mishandling of Comedy Central so they could then be mishandled by a, another network. The Sci-Fi Channel episodes, I guess, the continuity is no one's favorite and I think they maybe should have just let Mystery Science Theater be Mystery Science Theater rather than changing
changing it and adapting it and making this continuing story thing. But when I look back on this episode, I know how it turned out and I've seen, I think I've seen most of the Sci-Fi Channel episodes. I know how it develops, but I still, when I watch this, it always brings like a pleasant memory of that time. It's kind of like just an average, decent mystery science theater episode. And that's really what you want at the beginning is to show you like, hey, these guys can do it and Mike and the bots can do the best job they can and make me laugh at good references. And even that one where they keep going on about like all these various celebrities because like Beck and I just remember Beck because it was really in the Beck at the time, but all these various celebrities who are appearing like it's like a variety special. Like ongoing jokes like that remind me of why I love the series, but it's not a thing that I will think of when I think of why I love the series, but it reminds me of why I love the series. When I think of why I love the series, I think of Manos. I think of the great episodes. I think of things like that, but I don't think of this, but this reminds me of why I like it. And it reminded me of why I needed to still be into it and still be an awesome fan of an awesome show. And I think if you're doing a reboot of anything and you can just get people excited to be coming back for more, then you've done a successful job. And I think Mystery Science Theater 3801 Revenge of the Creature was successful in what it was attempting to do, which was bring back the show in the good graces of both the fans and the casual fans who hadn't been able to keep up with it maybe as much as they would have liked to. So if you have seen Mystery Science Theater 3801 Revenge of the Creature and you would like to talk about it, then comment below in the comments and subscribe if you would like to.